Hello, 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 and welcome back, family, to Masquerade Monday. My name is Huddy, and tonight we're talking LA by night. As always, this video is not scripted and these opinions are all my own, so take what I say with a grain of salt. The epilogues have begun kindred, and as Jason Carl says, the epilogues are short vignettes of the night that relate to the plot of the current season, but also foreshadow what is to come. So then, let's get on with it, shall we? We are almost at the end of the epilogues for season 4, and man was I excited to see that Juliet Landau was reprising her role as Hester this week. Obviously no stranger to playing a vampire, Juliet is incredible as Hester and almost exudes a wise, mysterious, mystical aura straight through the screen and into my soul, and I loved every minute of it. Our scene opens as Jasper enters Mystic Circle Books, the occult bookstore owned by the Weird Sisters Hester, Violet Luna, and Kyoko. As Jasper enters, he encounters Lydia for the third time this season, and once again she simply fangirls over Jasper and his makeup, and dedication to his supposed employment with Gorefest magazine. Jasper reluctantly plays along as she describes her ideas for future photo shoots, and eventually Jasper asks to speak with Hester. Lydia retrieves her from the back and then leaves for the night, turning the open sign to closed and locking up behind her. Hester wastes no time lightly chastising Jasper for the damage Kyoko took when she accompanied him, Eva, and Greg in episode 2. Hester claims Kyoko is naive and asks if she can trust Jasper to be wiser in the future, to which Jasper gives Hester his word. Jasper tells Hester that Eva has left LA, and Hester seems genuinely sorry for Jasper, and tells him she did not know Eva had left. Jasper tells Hester that he has someone he cares about who needs a clear head, obviously referring to X, and asks if it's possible to help him using blood magic. Hester says it is possible to do something about it, but this comes at a price, at a cost, and asks if magic is the only way to help him. Jasper divulges to Hester how little he truly knows about Kindred. He tells her about his embrace, that he was cornered in his apartment and abandoned, and had to learn all he knows through trial and error. Error. Jasper tells her that as a human, he wanted so badly for magic to be real, and no matter how hard he looked, it was always a farce, something that Jasper had told Victor back in episode 6. It wasn't until Jasper died that he realized magic was real, and even in death, he wasn't supposed to have it, referencing the fact that Nosferatu don't necessarily have an aptitude for thaumaturgy, but he persevered, exchanging boons to learn whatever he could. Hester tells him that she understands what that is like, that she too was embraced and abandoned. She claims she had a poor childhood, both as kind and kindred, that like Jasper, she had to learn everything on her own. Unlike Jasper, however, Hester says that she has seen her sire since her embrace, but only in dreams and visions, and refers to her as her dark mother, and it was through these visions that she was led to Strauss. So many things flew around in my head as soon as Hester said this, I had to actually pause the live stream. Now you all know I'm a huge World of Darkness lore nerd, but there's so much to unpack in just this statement alone. The revelations of the Dark Mother, the Book of Nod, Lilith, the Bahari, even by extension the Lamia, all these things deserve lore videos in their own right, and I couldn't do them justice in this recap, so I will try to be brief but coherent talking about the Dark Mother. Multiple times this season, we have seen and heard the characters reading from the Book of Nod, a collection of supposedly sacred texts from the Dark Father, Cain, the progenitor of the Kindred Race. According to the first section of the Book of Nod, the Chronicle of Cain, it was Lilith, the first wife of Cain's father Adam, who sheltered and clothed and fed Cain after he was cast out and cursed by God for killing his brother Abel. As stated in the text, it was Lilith who shared her magic with him by feeding him her blood, and that this blood awakened him to the powers of the kindred clans, such as celerity, protean, and so on. This led to other things too, the common banes of the kindred, such as weakness to the sun and dependence on blood, among other things. Cain was obsessed with his new powers, unleashing multiple disciplines at once. Lilith tried to stop him, but Cain decided he got what he wanted and no longer needed her. It states in the Book of Nod, Then Lilith commanded that I stop, saying that I had overreached my bounds, that I had gone too far, that I threatened my very essence. She used her powers and commanded me to stop. Because of her power, I heeded her, but deep within me a seed was planted, a seed of rebellion. 
I broke the bonds that the Lady of the Night put on me, I left the damned queen that evening, cloaking myself in shadows, where not even her demons could find me. It is not until the third section of the Book of Nod, the Chronicle of Secrets, which is all about Gehenna, that a Dark Mother is mentioned. It states, And the Dark Mother herself will be brought forth, and there, in the Valley of Enoch, will there be a battle, a duel of Dark Father and Dark Mother. The Demon Queen will bite deep, the Damned King will bite deeper. Now, it's important to note, that's just what the Nodists believe. Those who believe in Lilith as the true progenitor of the kindred race, most of whom belong to a cult called the Bahari, have different interpretations of events. They see Lilith as having been abused and betrayed by men over and over again. They talk of the children she had, both creature and kind, one of whom was supposedly the progenitor of the Lamia bloodline, and claim that to attain her particular brand of enlightenment, one must follow specific tenets. Like I said, it's a lot to go into, but if you want to know more right now, you can watch this video of me, Outstar, The Primogen, and Josh from Strange Adventures talk about the Bahari and other vampiric cults in a podcast we do called The Beckoning. Also, I should mention that I don't know how visions of the Dark Mother would lead Hester to Strauss. I had a really good chortle at the idea that Strauss is a secret Bahari, and as much as I love and will cherish that mental image, I don't think that's it. Jasper tells Hester that most of his family is gone, that one has left, one is mentally gone, and one hates him. I believe he is referring to Eva, X, and Chloe, respectively. It is possible the one who hates him is Annabelle, but I don't think so. We as the audience haven't really received any hints that Chloe hates Jasper, but he is our self-loathing Nosferatu sad boy, so it's not a stretch of the imagination that he believes Chloe hates him. He then says that those he cares about that are still here, meaning Victor, Nellie, and Annabelle, are important people and have dangerous enemies, and said that they will eventually get him killed because he's not important. Hester tries to tell him that a title doesn't make him important, but Jasper is not convinced. He says he needs to be taught how to use magic offensively, to make people go away, that Victor, Nellie, and Annabelle have ways to affect the minds of kindred and kind alike, but Jasper can't do that, so he throws himself bodily at problems, but it always ends up with him nearly dead. He goes on to say that Eva was always the one who did the magic, and Hester astutely asks if this worry of dying has something to do with her. Jasper admits that he doesn't want to die before she comes back, and that since those in his life who make him feel strong are gone, all he has left is learning more magic to add to his arsenal, claiming that casting spells makes him feel strong. Lydia returns in this moment for getting her laptop once again, like she did in episode two. Lydia gives Jasper some sketches and invites Jasper out for coffee or a drink sometime so they can talk more about Gorefest. For a Nosferatu, Jasper sure does have a way with the ladies. Jasper admits to Hester that although Kyoko has taught him some things already, such as the ritual Wake with Evening's Freshness and Corrosive Vitae, he believes her to be too innocent to teach him what he really wants to learn, and Hester doesn't appear to disagree with this. Jasper receives a text from Chloe saying, It's time to start paying me what you owe me. Meet me soon. Jasper asks when, and she replies, I'm not busy now. Before Jasper leaves, Hester tells Jasper that she will consider teaching him some things. Of course, these things are not specified, and Jasper offers his service in return, getting deeper into debt with Hester since he still owes her a boon for fixing the mirror. After Jasper leaves, Jason Carl asks Hester what she's thinking about in that moment. Hester's response? I'm thinking about the Dark Mother. If you haven't already, please go follow the World of Darkness Twitch channel and subscribe to them on YouTube. If you can, sub to their channel on Twitch and support their sponsors Backblaze and Level Up Dice. All links can be found in the description. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to me as well for new content every Masquerade Monday, and let me know your thoughts on Epilogue 4, with one wish, in the comments. Thank you so very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!